Dear students, can you please confirm me? Am I clearly audible and visible to all of you? Perfect. Great. A very warm welcome to all of you out there. Uh, uh, I welcome you all in today's live session, today's orientation session for advanced audit and assurance. Uh, I would request, uh, I would again request your acknowledgement. If you can please once again confirm me. I'm um, clearly audible and visible to all of you so that we can start our proceedings of the session. Great. Great. I hope every one of you uh, is doing great. Everyone of you are great, are gearing up yourself for the upcoming September 2023 attempt. Well, before starting the proceedings of the session, let me introduce myself. Let me take this opportunity to introduce myself. Uh, I will be your facilitator for this course of advanced audit and assurance for September 2023 and onwards batches. My name is Munir Mohammed Shafi. Uh, and I have been teaching this subject since quite long. Okay. My brief profile is out there on your screens. Uh, I am tutor for the subjects of AAA and SBR. Uh, AAA and SBR specialists with more than nine years of teaching experience. I not only teach ACCA students, I also teach CA students. I of ICAP, Institute of Chartered Accountants of Pakistan, and I teach taxation there. So these are my core areas of expertise, core areas of interest in which I try my best to share my experiences, to share my insights, and to enrich my students in these subjects from academic perspective, from professional perspective, from practical perspective, from all sides. Well, I myself am practicing auditor. I'm partner at HM Chartered Accountants, my own firm. Uh, I'm a fellow member of ACCA, fellow and practicing member of Institute of Chartered Accountants of Pakistan. Uh, I'm also a qualified person responsible for training of ICAW trainees in my firm. I'm currently also serving and I have also been part of various technical and professional committees of ICAP and ACCA Pakistan. Uh, I started my career with KBMG Pakistan, and then I served uh, more than five years in industry, and now I am in practice, and I'm practicing taxation, I'm practicing audit, and these are my core areas in which I'm working day in and day out. So I'll try my level best to enrich you in all the aspects, in all the areas which are necessary for your practical professional acceleration alongside your academic success. I also give my contact information for any one of you to contact me. Uh, I would be more happy to assist you in respect of any guidance, any suggestions, any mentoring. Uh, and I encourage my students to do so because every step which you take with the guidance of the professional professional specialists, experienced tutor uh, is likely to lead towards success. Well, 
the session agenda, the brief session agenda is on your screens. I hope my screen is also visible to all of you. Everyone out there, can you please acknowledge me? Time and again, I ask for the acknowledgement so that I can also have so late that every one of you is live in the wake. Attentive as well. Great. So in this session, uh, we'll be discussing about AAA, what AAA is, what's the importance of, uh, what is the importance of this AAA paper amongst all professional skill papers? Because many students keep on asking, which optional papers should you go for? Why AAA? I'll be throwing some light on it. Then we'll be discussing about the syllabus. We'll be having a thorough overview of the syllabus as well. We'll be looking at paper patterns in key areas. Passing ratio of this subject, a okay. bit horrible. And students get scared of this passing ratio. Students tend to be scared of this passing ratio. I'll thoroughly dig out the reasons of this poor passing ratio and I'll let you know what's the key secret or key, uh, I should say, sauce, secret sauce to have this paper grabbed in your kitty. Professional skill marks, we all know that uh, since last year, the professional skill marks have been introduced in this examination and there are 20 professional marks. What are these professional marks? How are we going to target this, these professional marks? Are these easy to get or are these difficult to get? We'll have a look at it. Then we'll also dig out about the reasons of failure. We'll also discuss about what, what do we mean by exam technique? And I'll show you what exam technique is. And I'll show you how important it is is to have a full grip over this exam technique in order to have the success in AAA. And I'll show you that this is the reason why the students fail this exam. Because until and unless you master the exam technique and until and unless you practice it aggressively, rigorously, you cannot, you cannot obtain full professional marks and you cannot provide enough technical content in your answers to grab the available marks. And these exam techniques, like all these exam techniques, magical tools to unlock your success. And these will surely unlock your success. We'll talk about our teaching methodology, how we'll be going to proceed in this course, what I'll be offering you, how I'll be supporting you, and mind my words, your success is my success. And I'll make sure, I'll try my level best to ensure, to make sure that you succeed this examination by the grace of Allah, okay? And then last but not the least, we'll be discussing about the session planner, how are you going to proceed, what about live classes? Because I'll be covering this course through live classes so that I can keep track of your progress, so that you can keep yourself on track, so that you do not, you do not lag behind. Because what happens when students go on the recorded content, when the students keep the, the uh, when students opt for the recorded track, sometimes they look at the lecture, sometimes they miss the lecture. And this, and this is the reason why the lectures keep on piling up. And what happens? One fine morning you wake up and you see, oh, such a long list of lectures which I need to cover. Okay, I'll cover some later day. And that later day doesn't come any day before exam. Okay, so we'll have a look at it, how to go through. Well, First of all, I'll be talking about the syllabus of AAA. Very, very important discussion coming out your way. What is in it? What is AAA all about? Okay. But before moving on to that, one objective about AAA and its importance. First of all, its importance. And then we'll move on to the course outline. AAA. Why this paper is the most important? Or why do we place a lot of emphasis on this paper? Why not other professional papers? Okay. I am not demeaning any other professional paper by any means. With due respect, all professional papers are of 
top-notch level and all professional papers enrich you with a required set of skills in that particular respective area. So with due respect to all other professional skill papers, I would simply highlight few key differences which makes this paper stand out. And what are these differences? Number one, if you talk about AAA advanced order in the shorts, you are doing ACCA and you should know that ACCA is audit supervisory body. And ACCA qualification is primarily, primarily audit qualification. The certification is primarily audit certification. Are you getting this? So many of you or many of the ACCA aspirants who are aiming their qualification, who are aiming their certification, they are having plans to exceed. They are having plans to progress in the field of audit and assurance. And chartered accountant is deemed to be an auditor. By default, a chartered accountant is an auditor. Okay. And the subject of audit basically inculcates such professional skills, such critical analysis, such critical thinking, which will not help you as an auditor only, which will help you as an accountant as well. Because wherever you go, you may be a CFO down the line after four or five years or might be 10 years of a big company. But this is skill to look at the areas from critical analysis, from critical point of view, from critical mindset, from questioning mindset, from auditing perspective, will always keep you an edge ahead. So this auditing skills is not only for the auditors, but also for professional accountants. Are you getting this? Number two. Through this subject, you can set your own audit practice. You can have audit practicing rights in UA. You can have audit practicing rights in UK. You can have audit practicing rights in any other jurisdiction which allows the ACC member to practice audit. And this is a tool. For example, I'm a practicing chartered accountant. I'm a practicing auditor. Here in Pakistan, uh, a chartered accountant from the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Pakistan is allowed to practice. So I'm a practicing chartered accountant. I have this tool. I have this all important and all strong immunization in me to progress in my field, to earn a lot, to excel a lot professionally in terms of financial value, everything else. Okay. So once again, ACCA is an audit certification, is an audit qualification. ACCA is an audit supervisory body. The students appearing in ACCA are aiming to be auditors. And this AAA is a very, very decent paper, technical paper. And I always say that this paper, this paper is such a professional paper, such a mature professional paper, which requires three key skills to excel in your examinations in your career. Three key skills. You should have three skill sets to attempt to pass this paper. And all these skill sets are gradually developed by ACC through other papers. For example, number one, you've already appeared for SBL. Most of you might have been SBL for the right. Your writing skills are very professional, very mature writing skills. Presumably, I'm presuming, okay? Very important for AAA. Number two, your accounting knowledge. You all have appeared for SBR. You all have already appeared for SBR, presumably. And you all know accounting standards. And you'll see how much important the role of accounting standards in AAA. At every step, you will need the help of accounting standards. At every step, you will be checked. You will be challenged about your accounting knowledge. Grab it. And I'll help you out because I'm also the tutor of SBR. So I'll try my level best to not only inculcate auditing skills in you, I'll also try to enrich you from accounting perspective. So don't worry at all. Getting? And number three, last but not the least, 
auditing skills, auditing knowledge, auditing standards. So these three skills in combination ensure your AAA success. Professional and mature writing skills, grip over accounting standards, reporting standards, and grip over auditing standards. Combining all three, you're all set to go. Syllabus overview. Let's have a quick overview of the syllabus and then we'll move on to how we'll proceed about this exam. Okay, so there are several learning objectives. This is a professional paper and obviously we cannot adopt any restrictive approach, any selective approach, and we have to cover this subject holistically, thoroughly, from all possible aspects, from all possible angles. Are you getting this? So obviously, a thorough coverage from all areas is must. First of all, a first learning objective, regulatory environment, regulatory environment on your screens, regulatory environment. So what will, we, what will we be discussing in this learning objective? Although this is not very important from exam perspective, although this is not very important from exam perspective, but still, okay, let me see how, if I can use my pen as well. Okay, so I'll give it one star. Not very important from exam perspective. But still, I'll give it one star. Why? Because obviously, we need to cover this. We'll be discussing about the regulatory authorities. We'll be discussing about the audit regulators, those who regulate the audit profession. As for example, I told you, ACC is audit supervisory body. As for example, there are local statutory bodies who oversee the entire auditing process. Are you getting this? So who regulates this process? Because there have been scandals, there have been incidents where the auditors have issued the wrong opinion, the audit work gone unchecked, unreviewed, unorganized, no checks and balances from the legal authorities, lawful authorities, and they have been disasters in terms of corporate failures. So we'll see who the audit regulators are, money laundering, this is a topic which is relatively new for you because you haven't started this in your earlier examination of AA audit insurance. So we'll have a discussion what money laundering is, how is it actually executed, what is the problem and what are the roles and responsibilities of the auditors. Other laws and regulations, we being auditors, if we are auditing any entity, we are assumed and we are supposed to have the knowledge of laws and regulations which are applicable on the entity. And why are we supposed to do so? Because, because until and unless we know those relevant laws and legislations, how are we supposed to identify the financial implications if the entity has non-complied, if the entity has been accused of non-compliance in any of the area? So we should know, okay? We should know the relevant laws and regulations, at least to those which have financial impact on the statement of financial position, on the financial statements, okay? Then, a very important learning objective, professional and ethical considerations. Professional and ethical considerations. And this, again, this is not a new learning objective for you. You have already started this professional and ethical consideration in your AA paper, audit and assurance paper. Here again, this learning objective is very, very important. Examined at depth. What are we supposed to do so? Number one, we'll be recapping all the previous knowledge which we have gained in AA. Number two, we'll be developing advanced level concepts. So whatever needed here is what AAA is. Number three, we'll develop exam technique of this area because that's very, very important. Until and unless you develop exam technique for professional and ethical consideration or any other area, it's very difficult to score the maximum marks. Getting? Very interesting area, very important area, and it features in every attempt. So obviously, we cannot risk focusing it any lesser. Fraud and error, you've already studied. It'll be a revision from your earlier studies, and it appears in examination not that frequently, but it is is still an important area. Professional liability, a new area for you. You have to start this in your earlier papers. And why this is important? This is actually important from practical perspective. 
For example, a chartered accountant like me, who is in audit practice, I'm serving my clients. I'm giving services to my clients. I'm giving audit opinions to my clients. So don't you think that I will be concerned about my professional liability? What is my liability? What if my opinion goes wrong? What if I found negligent in my audit work and the client sustains any loss as a result of that negligent opinion? What happens then? They might claim, they might sue me. To which extent I would be liable? I should know for the peace of my mind. What maximum liability I may be required to incur as per the laws and regulations and standards? How can I limit it? Very important. Very, very important. Quality and practice management, a very important area. And there have been changes in that from the last attempt, uh, from, uh, sorry, from the last syllabus. Uh, earlier, this was a quality control standard, and then a few additional aspects have been popped in. The standards have been revised, and now it's called quality management, ISQM, International Standards on Quality Management. Very important focus of the examiner. Examiner has also issued a technical article summarizing key aspects of ISQM. I'll also go you which technical articles to cover, so don't worry about that. So quality management, firm-wide, engagement-wide, very important. Advertising, tendering, obtaining professional work, and we obviously, we all are accountants, we all are auditors, and auditing, or for suppose if I'm practicing, my firm is a professional venture. I'm here to earn through those assignments, obviously. So I'll be advertising my work, I'll be tendering proposals. I'll be quoting my fee. So what are the key aspects? What are the key factors behind all these elements, all these drivers? Because obviously, one day, suppose if you are going to run your own firm, you should know all these aspects. You should know what are the key factors that you should, you should keep in mind before advertising, how you should be tendering your work, how will you be selling your work, how will you be setting the fees that you don't go in loss, the assignment doesn't go in loss? What are the fee arrangements which are allowed from standards perspective, from legal perspective? Should know everything, okay? Professional appointments, which assignment to accept, which to reject? Why? What are the key considerations? Again, this is a very, very important area. Very, very important area. So again, I'll I'll just mark it three stars. This is very, very important, especially this. And this again is very important. And within this area, this is important. This is important. Advertising, tendering. Obtaining professional work, it doesn't come up that frequently. Planning and conduct of the audit. See, now this is the heart and soul of the AAA paper, heart and soul learning objective. Okay. Why I'm saying this is a heart and soul learning objective? Because this is the actual conduct of the audit. Planning and conduct. So, broadly speaking, there are three phases of audit planning and risk assessment. Conduct of the audit, audit testing, gathering evidence, completion review and reporting. Three stages, broadly speaking, broadly speaking, three stages. Planning and risk assessment, audit testing, gathering evidences, completion review and reporting. So two stages, two stages are covered in this learning objective. Planning and risk assessment, conduct and performance of the audit, testing and gathering evidences. So this is the learning objective very, very important learning objective. And I, I'm not wrong if I say that this makes around 50% of your exam paper. This makes around 50% of your exam paper. Very important. Question number one focuses on planning and risk assessment. We will see the breakdown of questions and which areas are targeted and which question. So don't go anywhere. A lot of interesting things uh, are coming your way in this session. Very interesting analysis, very interesting, uh, what, should I, what should I say, resources I'll be sharing with you.
planning, materiality, and risk assessment. Very important area, risk assessment. And standards emphasizes a lot of importance on planning estate. Why? Because if any engagement is planned well, it is bound to be executed well. If you do not plan well, you cannot execute well. This goes true in every sphere of your life. You see yourself, you are preparing for triple A. What if you do not plan your preparation or you do not plan your studies well? What will happen? Disaster. Planning is the key to success. If you will plan well, you will execute well. If you plan well, you will execute well. Get it? So planning, materiality, risk assessment, very important. How do we plan? How do we assess the risk? How do we smell the risk? How we, how we spot the problematic areas and how we target those areas specifically? I'll teach you. Then the next step, evidence and testing. How we gather evidences, how we perform the procedures. What are the assertions? How we target those assertions? Very important area. Very, very exam-focused area. Using the work of others. What do you mean the work of others? Who are others? By the way, who are others? Others may be the internal audit function. Others may be the professional experts. You may be using the work of internal audit. How to use, what to use, when to use. Very important. Using the work of others. When to use the work of experts. How to use the work of experts. What are the key considerations? Because you are not the expert in every area. For example, you are not the expert of valuing pension obligations. You are not the expert of valuing financial instruments. You are not the experts of valuing land and building. Then what? You will take the help of the valuers. Okay. What are the key considerations? Very important. Group audits. Another area which you haven't seen in your earlier studies. New for you. Very important. Exam focused. Most of the time, question number one it revolves around the group audit. It revolves around group audit considerations. Very important. And the most important thing, which I would like to tell you here, that this entire area revolves around the accounting concepts as well. Okay? Accounting concepts are key to success in this area. Every standard which you have studied in SBR, every standard which you have studied in SBR, mind my words, can be tested here in this area. Any standard, every standard and any standard. Are we getting this? So we'll be recapping those standards. Very, very important. Very, very important. Now the students, the students tend to get worried. The students tend to get worried. What do they think? The students think that they might be required to go into nitty gritties of the accounting standards. They might be required to go in the nitty gritties of the numbers. No. You are not supposed to go in the nitty gritties of the numbers. No. You are required to recall the basic principles, the broad principles of every standard. Don't be scared. Don't get afraid. I'm here to help you out. And I'll ensure that you recall the necessary knowledge amongst all standards. And I've prepared few summaries. I've prepared few key areas of the counting standards to help students out, okay? Completion review and reporting. What is that? Completion review and reporting. As I told you, third and the last phase. Third and the last phase. Completion, review, and reporting. Okay. And then this, you will be discussing about subsequent events, going concern problems. Now, this is the checklist when we are completing a audit and we need to see all these areas, all the requirements of these areas have been complied with or not. Very key aspects, subsequent events. Are there any events after the reporting period which may require adjustment, which may require disclosure? Any going concern implications? Any doubts about the entity's ability to continue as a going concern? Because as we know, that if, if 
this going concern assumption changes no matter it's a post balance sheet event a post period and event it is still an adjusting event most of you i hope you can recall from your accounting knowledge okay auditor's report very very important area very very important area auditor's report reporting opinion types of opinion types of additional paras what is a qualified opinion what is an adverse opinion what is a disclaimer what is merk para what is other info para a very interesting discussion we will be discussing everything we will be practicing it a lot reports to those charged with governance we are not only bound to report to the shareholders we are also required to report to those charged with governance the audit committee the, the known executive directors and how do we do so and what do we report we will discuss about it and you know this the board letter the management letters the weaknesses and not only the weaknesses not only the control weaknesses but any other important thing any other event significant event of audit importance gets communicated to those charged with governance i'll show you i'll show you the details and we will discuss this in detail as well other assignments a very interesting area again this is new for you you haven't started this area in your earlier studies you haven't started this in your earlier studies so this again is an area of interest and the area of focus for the exam we will see what see suppose if my if i run an audit firm i run an audit firm so do i provide only audit services answer is no we provide a range of services almost all these services which are mentioned here and even few additional services are you getting this so audit related services assurance services we will see we will see what are how many assurance services are there and do we provide only assurance services or are the other types of audit related services for example attestation services agreed upon procedures what are these when are these executed i'll tell you don't worry specific assignments due diligence assignments for example company a is is looking to acquire company b now company a needs the help in taking this decision so the company a approaches you as a professional services firm to help them out in taking this decision to evaluate this as a potential target and whether it is a good go to acquire this company or not review of interim financial information so you might all be aware of the IS34 interim financial information the accounting standard interim financial information IAS34 what happens when entity prepares that interim inf information auditor reviews that information that information is not audited it's reviewed now what's the difference between review and the audit what are the key factors underpinning the review i'll show you don't worry about that. we'll discuss at length what's the difference when a uh, review opinion is issued in which circumstances in which uh, services i'll tell you prospective financial information future cash flows future pnls prospective financial information cash flow forecast profit forecast profit projections reviewed by the auditor how when which opinion issued what are the responsibilities what are types of opinion we'll be discussing it forensic broad investigations broad investigations a fraud has taken place in a company perpetrators have forged a lot of money or they have been embezzlement in cash expenses for example and ceo has approached you dear mr auditor dear professional services firm we need your services we need your help in investigating this fraud this potential fraud we need your forensic expertise will you help us out we'll see what are the considerations we'll see when can we help and when can we and when we can't auditor performance information in public sector we'll be looking at it. social environmental concerns social environmental integrated reporting burning issue hot topic current issue examiner focuses this 
there are there are technical articles available on this we'll discussing we'll be discussing this other assignments uh, what are the reporting implications on other assignments which type of opinion we should report in other assignments current issues and developments we will have a look at it what are the key trends and developments in the field of audit professional mark Very important area. And I cannot cover the discussion in this short session because we have lots and lots of discussion over these professional marks. Because these are 20 professional marks, 20 professional marks. 20% 20 of your exam paper lies in here. And mind my words, it's free. You don't have to study anything additional to grab these marks. Whatever you have studied, you are just requested to study it properly. Whatever your tutor is telling you, just apply it properly. What I'm teaching you, what techniques I'm teaching you, how I'm teaching you to draft, just follow that. And if you are able to follow that properly, these professional skills are in your kitty automatically. You don't have to do a penny additional to grab these marks. Are you getting this? But the point is, you have to take the sessions comprehensively. Don't skip any session. Don't skip any practice session. Don't skip any lecture, conceptual lecture. Because I'll be telling you at various places here, you can, by doing this, you can score professional marks. By doing this, you can score professional marks. By doing this, by writing this, you can score professional marks. So all that knowledge database will help you out in grabbing these professional marks to the maximum extent. Very important. And by the advent of these professional marks, by the introduction of these professional marks, this paper, I believe, has got easier for the students. Earlier, In three, you had to write for 96 technical marks. Only there were four professional marks. Only four. And now there are 20. So earlier, you have to write for 96 marks in three hours and 15 minutes. And now you have to write only for 80 marks. You have to draft for only 80 technical marks. And if you have managed to draft for those 80 technical marks sensibly, so we're following a tutor's guidance, the 20 professional marks will be automatically in your kitty. And I'm not joking. I'll show you how. Communication. Okay, I'm, just, I'm simply giving you an overview of these. Communication. In the earlier format, the previous format, these were only four professional marks for communication. These four, those four marks still exist here in which the marks are of, for primarily writing briefing note structure, writing headings for your answers, making bullet points, a structure, sequence, clarity of expressions, conclusions, prioritizing risks, et cetera, et cetera. Long list. Using the relevant technical jargons, I'll show you how, I'll teach you how. Communication box. Part and parcel of what you study, what you write, what you practice. Analysis and evaluation. You will be giving with you will be given the numbers. You'll be given the technical, uh, the, the details surrounding those numbers. You have to connect those. You have to analyze the numbers in light of the information given to you to analyze those numbers. Don't look in isolation. Connect it with what you have been given in the passage. You have to evaluate. Give both sides of the picture, pros and cons. Benefits, drawbacks. Give your conclusion. For example, treatment, a particular treatment is wrong. Why is it wrong? Give your arguments properly. You'll get these professional marks. 
professional skepticism and judgment. Think from critical mindset, questioning mindset. Don't accept whatever is given to you in the question on the face of it. In technical terminology, we say, don't rely on things prima facie on the face of it. Client might be trying to deceive you. They might be trying to detract you so that you don't identify the missing statements, so that you don't identify the adjustments, the fraudulent entries, the missing stated entries, because they might have intentionally played with the numbers to manage the earnings. Getting commercial acumen, your business angle, your business knowledge, and where it comes into play when you're asked about business risks. Very upfront example, business risks. You are supposed to identify what are the business risks and how are these impacting the business. Then you are asked to propose controls. So when you are well-versed with the business environment, when you know the ins and outs of the business, then only you will be able to suggest proper controls. I hope I'm able to give you three, four of you about this. Then comes employability and technology skills. What about this? This is nothing new, but what you have already been doing in the papers since inception of ACC, CB platform. Attempting questions, accessing platform, writing your answers, using tools to write your answers and everything. So this is, this is, we'll be practicing from day one, inshallah. So don't worry about that. Okay, on your screen is the exam pattern. I would really appreciate if you can acknowledge that exam pattern is on your screens. So that I can also know that you are live and awake. Which I hope so. Everyone, awaiting your signals. Everyone, I would request everyone, please. Great. So this is the exam pattern. This is the exam pattern, which is on your screens. Three questions. Question one, question two, question three. 50, 25, 25. Question one is of 50 marks, 40 technical marks, 10 professional marks. Question two, 25 marks, 20 technical, five professional. And same is the case with question number three. Question number one will almost all the times, if you allow me, so I can have some water, please. Okay. So question number one, will always be set at the planning stage. As I told you, planning is a very important stage of the audit. If the audit is planned well, it's executed well. So planning stage, it could be a new client or existing client, okay? Let me use the pointer again. Planning stage. It could be a new client or existing client. And in question number one, what you will be asked for, what you will be assessed for. Most of the time, you'll see these areas in question number one. Most of the time, almost all the times. These areas. What are these areas? Business risk, audit risk, ethical professional matters, procedures and evidence. Most of the time. And I call these technique based areas. Why I call them technique based area? Why I'm calling these technique based areas? Because there is a specific technique. I'll show you just coming in the slides to come. I'll show you that there is a specific technique 
address these areas. There is a specific technique approach these areas. Until and unless you are proficient on that technique, you cannot target this to perfection. You cannot target this to perfection. I'll teach you what the technique is. I'll teach you how to apply it. And you need to practice it. Maximum practice. And you'll be all ready to get, set, go. I'll show you what are the techniques. I'll show you sample techniques. So risk assessment, business risk. So when I say technique-based areas, so these are the technique-based areas for which we have specific techniques in place. If you follow that technique, if you follow that thought process, if you follow that pattern to solve the answer, you are through. The next question usually will be on, could be question two, question three, completion review and reporting phase in which you'll see a question on audit reporting, implications on audit, audit report, reporting. Again, you may be asked about procedures and evidence. In question one, you can also be asked. In question two, you can also be asked about this. Ethical and professional matters. It could be tested in question one, it could be tested in question two. No restriction, no hard and fast rule. The only rule which you should keep in mind, the technique. Whether it's coming in part A, question one, whether it's coming in question two, you shouldn't be worried. You know how to tackle it. You know how to target. You know how to nail it down. What's the worry? Get it? Question three, usually about other assignments, as I told you, due diligence, forensics, and BFI, and et cetera. Current issues may be tested. Other open-ended questions may be tested. Again, here also ethics play its role, may play its role, and acceptance considerations, very important part. Examiner is targeting this requirement in every attempt or at least every alternative attempt. So you cannot risk losing it. You get it? Procedures. Now, here are the procedures will be targeted, aimed towards the non audit assignments. If you're performing forensics, which procedures you will follow? If you're performing due diligence, PFI exercise, what procedures you will adopt and follow? Important knowledge areas are not tested usually, but obviously, as part of technical article, they could be any knowledge related element. So th this, these are the important points which I've made. Ethical requirements can feature in any question. Audit and other procedures can feature in any question. Other standards requirements are also tested periodically. And this is just an indicative grid. Selective studies are highly discouraged. Now I'll show you a sheet. You should stay with me. I'll show you a sheet. Okay. I hope this Excel sheet is on your screens. Dear students, I need your acknowledgement. Otherwise, I will not be able to know that you are able to see my screen. Dear students, okay, a very important analysis, just for the sake of your convenience and comfort level, I've made this analysis. Okay, question one, December 2022, September 22. So these are all the attempts. December 22, September 22, March, June 22, September 21, March, June 21, September, December 20, March 2019. So what I'm trying to show you, what I'm trying to show you, I'm trying to show you that the technique-based areas, which I have highlighted, those technique-based areas are repeating in every attempt. In every attempt, just hang on, please. In every attempt, 
these technique based areas will be tested because these are the core areas and once you master those techniques once you master those techniques you will grab the maximum marks c as i told you question number 1 usually you are asked about business risk audit risk c business risk business risk audit risk business risk audit risk business risk audit risk audit risk i told you planning the engagement business risk audit risk audit risk a question number 1 will always feature audit risk so don't worry about that you should be very strong in audit risk see audit procedures audit procedures audit procedures audit procedures ethical considerations audit procedures ethical considerations so once you are expert in the technique application of the technique be it any scenario be it any industry be it any situation be it any standard you know the technique you simply should know the technique for example just an example you know how to swim now either you're swimming in a swimming pool or in a pond of water or in any lake if you know swimming you can swim okay matters to be considered other assignments the matters to be considered in prospective financial information as i told you matters to be considered in acceptance okay pfi procedures non audit assignments procedures pfi procedures matters to be considered in pfi matters to be considered in pfi procedures so pfi is very important examiner likes this a lot quality management issues as i told you audit reporting implication matters to be considered in audit evidence audit reporting implication audit reporting implications audit reporting audit reporting subsequent events and audit procedures audit evidences and you can go behind as well this analysis i'll share this analysis with you the point to focus here is this technique based areas every question will have this so what we have in place what we have in place we have in place techniques for every area i have made these techniques for every area these are the techniques for every area if you follow this technique if you follow this thought process you're not going to lose the sight of half even half a mark getting for example you first of all need to identify the threat you need to explain why is it a threat you need to evaluate the significance of a threat is it significant it's not significant what are the factors underpinning the significance what actions you will take which what marks ethical and professional considerations if a question asks for ethical and professional consideration what is the thought process you should be running what is the list you should be checking what is the thought process you will be running so this is the list which you will be applying business risk there is a technique for the business risk marking is key very important what to write how to write business risk and i'll show you how to draft as per that technique are you getting this similarly the technique for audit risk six step technique six steps technique 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 you need to understand these six steps and then you need to apply these six steps you will not lose even a single mark in your audit risks inshallah i'll tell you how to apply this i'll tell you how to master this another thing which i was telling you acceptance considerations see this is the technique for acceptance consideration if you can master this technique i'll teach you how to master it i'll teach you how to apply this in the questions you will never lose your marks with the marking scheme if this is an audit related consideration for acceptance it will be two mark per point if it is a non audit related it will be one mark per point okay i am just okay i can listen the call for prayers so i'm taking one minute i'm taking one minute silence break because it's call for prayers azan uh, in my background so i'll be taking one minute silence break 
and then I'll continue speaking. Okay, so this is the technique. If you can recall this list for audit related acceptance considerations, if you can recall this list for non audit related consideration, then you can search for this pointers in the given content and you will never lose any relevant consideration ever when you are attempting the question. Are you getting this? So I'll teach you how you can apply this in any given scenario. And you are likely to succeed in identifying almost all the given pointers in the scenario. Okay, so these techniques, matters and evidence question, matters to consider. Which area is misstated? Identify the relevant accounting rules governing the scenario. Apply the above rules. Calculate and assess materiality. If the client has done materially wrong, what's the impact on report? Whether the sufficient appropriate audit evidence has been obtained. Any other consideration, professional skepticism, sample size, sufficient procedures, procedures appropriate in the circumstances, relevant procedures, targeting the assumptions. If you can recall this, if you can apply this to the scenario, if you if you are trained to apply this in the scenario, you are through, inshallah. Okay. So having said that, these are the techniques, very, very important techniques. You need to master it. Now, why this students fail? But it's so simple when we know what's coming up in the paper, when we know which areas are tested, when we know what's important and what not, when we know what's the exam technique, when we know how to apply. Why do we fail? Selective studies. Don't do selective studies. Cover it thoroughly, cover it holistically. Accounting standards, very important. I'll try to recap all the relevant accounting standards and their relevant requirements. I'll Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, I'll be able to help you better in this area because I myself am SBR tutor. Lack of paper technique. I'll, I'll demonstrate how all these techniques are applied in the question, how all these techniques are applied in the question and how you'll be fetching the marks out of it. Lack of practice. Now that's on you. The more you practice, the more proficient you will get. Poor answer planning. I'll tell you how to plan the answer. One fourth time should be spent in planning. One fourth time, twenty five percent of the time should should be spent in planning. I'll show you how. What are the planning pointers? How will you be drafting it? How will you be planning it? I'm here to help you out. Poor writing skills. You have to work a lot. You have to improve your writing skills. You have to improve your typing speed. You have to adapt the mindset or role given as per the examiner, as per the question. You have to properly understand the requirement, comprehend the requirement. There are breakdowns of the requirement. It, it simply gives an impression in the first sight that this is one requirement, but, but when you dissect it, but when you make it post small, you see that there are multiple requirements joined into the question. Segregate those. Segregate those and attempt it separately. Tack it separately, attempt it separately. Failure to understand marking is key. Very important. I have I have concised marking scheme with every area. I'll show you how you go for that. Unable to comprehend issues. 
you need to comprehend issues properly. You have to identify pick the issues properly. That comes through practice. That comes through proper knowledge. It comes through regular classes. Poor typing speed. Improve your typing speed. Otherwise, you'll suffer. Poor time management. Or running on a specific part. You compromise other questions. You compromise other areas. Ignoring technical articles. Ignoring examiner reports. Technical articles gives you uh, a highlight. Gives you an indication what examiner is interested in. Don't leave it. Examiner reports. Examiner tells you where the students tend to do mistakes, tend to commit mistakes. Very important. Do read those examiner reports. I've already discussed about the ethical threats. Okay. Last but not the least, and then I'll be opening the forum for your questions. What will be our teaching methodology? How I will be supporting you? How I will be teaching you throughout this session? Okay, we'll be having two live classes per week, two live classes per week, and we'll cover all the topics through the live sessions. All these classes, I would suggest you, I would urge you to attend the live sessions so that things do not get piled up. Otherwise, the students struggle. The lectures uh, are accumulated, they pile up, and then the students tend to start worrying. So better to attend live classes and avoid your time for the future. Uh, avoid avoid uh, your inconvenience for the future so that you can utilize maximum time for your practice. You can be on track with the tutor. Obviously, these live sessions will be uploaded on the LMS as recorded sessions. You will be having e-notes, whatever I'll teach you, slides, notes, I'll provide you. Exam-based testing app, you will have the access. Regular assignments, I'll give you the assignments. I'll mark those in the live session. I'll discuss those in the live sessions. We'll be having a grand revision as well. There will be a WhatsApp support group for your queries, for your help. I'll provide you the latest study support material, okay? Uh, exam focus webinar just before the examinations. Tutor assistance support, our assistants will be there to support you. Your queries have been related and other. Mock checking, I myself check the mock and this is the most important thing which you should do. Because as per my experience, many students have passed just by attempting the mock. Because when they got to know what are their mistakes, what are their follies, what what are their lackings? They overcame those lackings and they passed through mock. Very important. And I strictly mock the mock. Strictly. Yes, these will be online live sessions and live practice marathon. I'm shortly sharing the planner as well. I hope my screen is crystal clear. Okay, Burton, I recommend Kaplan. Okay, I recommend Kaplan because it's easy to cover. It's to the point, easy, easily coverable, uh, and easily uh, digestible for the students. Okay, so these are live sessions. Uh, we are standing on 20. There's a bit of amendment in this. Uh, I, I'll amend it. There is a bit of amendment because it's 22nd today and we are having 22nd uh, orientation on 22nd. So the days will be shifted a bit, but this is a tentative live planner, live sessions. We will be having sessions every Thursday and Saturday, not the upcoming Thursday because we will, we will be having Eid. And I'll be telling you the alternate day in which I'll be conducting the session. I'll communicate. I'll communicate. If there is any change in the session, I'll keep on communicating. Suppose if there is any gazetted holiday, if there is any change in the schedule, I'll communicate it. But these are the live sessions. 
twice a week. Okay. Uh, and then we'll be having four day AAA live revision and practice marathon from 17th to 20th August. Then 22nd August, we'll be having a final mock. 28th, we'll be having a result and mock debrief. Uh, every live session will be of around two, two and a half hours. Two hours or two and a half hours. Weekday sessions will start at 6.30 p.m. PST. Weekday sessions will be on Thursday. And that will start on 6.30 p.m. Uh, as for Pakistan standard time, plus five GMT. Thursday, the weekday session is on Thursday. The dates are there. So it's Thursday, Saturday, Thursday, Saturday, Thursday, Saturday. Okay. And weekend session, that means the Saturday session will be in 4.30 p.m. PST. Total course duration will be around 50 to 60 hours. Uh, and recording of live sessions will be made available at LMS within two working days. Are you getting this? Jihan. Inshallah. If you take, if you attend the live sessions and, and, the, and the practice is very important. Mock is very important. If you attend the mock, if you get in mock, if you get to know your mistakes, you will definitely pass because your marks are not that far away from the passing boundary. Burton, Burton, uh, okay, I'm sharing the number, although I have already shared my number there on the slide. Okay, it's on your screens. My contact information, you can just text me and I'll place you in the relevant group. So this is my number. You can save it, you can text me, I'll add in your relevant group. I'll be sharing the links of uh, live sessions in that group. Okay. You can attend uh, the first few complimentary live sessions and then you can get yourself registered. No worry. Uh, you can text me and I'll share the link of the generic WhatsApp group. Getting? And the admin representative, you, you will also be in touch with the admin representative so you can get yourself enrolled in the course. Any other queries, you are most welcome to discuss any questions, any concerns, any queries. Most welcome. Anyone? Okay, Amna. Well, it depends. Uh, you can text me directly. It depends on various factors. Okay, Burton, can you please text me? I've shared my number. Can you please text me on WhatsApp? And I'll add you to the group. Okay, Amna, it depends. Yes. You uh, okay? Let me let me re respond one by one. First of all, Amna, yes, you can attend, and yes, you can pass. But it depends on a few factors. Suppose if you are in completely work a full time working role, then you are not able to take our proper time to take classes, to practice. Then it may get difficult. But suppose if you can spare two hours a day, even that's enough for you to pass. Two hours per day. Okay, other than the live classes, two to three hours per day, you can pass this paper easily, inshallah. Okay, Burton, uh, you can text me, I'll add you to the group. Inayatullah, will we be provided with the word documented notes? I'll provide you the notes, I'll provide you the slides, annotated slides, even on which I have marked. So don't worry, those notes are not handwritten, obviously, uh, and those will be the curriculum slides which I'll be sharing you, which I'll be teaching you. Okay, so don't worry about that. You'll be provided everything, so no worries. Any other question or should I wrap up?
Okay, few words just before leaving the session. Few words, few words, few last words. I'll request just a few minutes of your presence more. See, life is very short and time is very short. And we cannot waste our life and our time just by tempting it again and again and again and again and wasting our time and effort our life. This paper for most of these students is the qualification decider. If you are determined, if you are committed, and if you realize this fact that your life is not a useless thing to waste on this paper, then you have to work your heart out and, and shut down this paper once for all in upcoming attempt. And mind my words, you can do this. You can nail this. Seriousness, dedication, determination, focus. That's it. I'm here to help you out. I'm here to facilitate you from all aspects, inshallah. Okay, but your commitment should be there. It is must. Your approach should be serious. You should be practicing it day in and day out. Your practice matters the most. No matter how good I teach, how good I deliver, how much I deliver, it will depend a lot on your self-practice. I'll give you the direction. I'll show you the path. I'll even push you to that path. But covering that way, covering that success lane is your duty, is your responsibility. Are you getting this? And I'm very, very hopeful that all my students sitting out there are determined. Pass this paper. Lots and lots of best wishes and lots and lots of Prayers for all of you. May Allah Almighty uh, bless you with flying colors. May Allah Almighty gives you lots and lots of success at every step of your life. Uh, and may we be able to help you out in that success. It will be our absolute pleasure. Thank you, students. Thank you very much for attending this session. Take care a lot. Best wishes for all of you. See you in the upcoming live session. Goodbye from your tutor. Bye-bye.